Hello guys, this is the Gaming Revolution here and welcome back to an all new Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War Zombies video. So with Season 2 Reloaded, there is a bunch of new intel within Outbreak and a lot of it is very interesting. Today I'm going to be going over a few of the key ones that I think you should make note of. So obviously, at the end of Tag to Toten, Eddie and Samantha stepped through into this new rebooted universe but for some weird reason, Samantha has not been reunited with Eddie the new incarnation of Richtofen. And upon Outbreak releasing, there was a new piece of intel added that is an excerpt from Samantha's diary that reads, Sometimes I find it hard to sleep, even though I look forward to it. When I dream, I see faces. Faces of people I care about and faces of people that don't care for me. Sometimes it's hard to distinguish between the two, but one face stands out from all the others. The face of a child, a boy. He is lost, damaged, but I want to help him, but somehow I feel that he is dangerous. Dreams are unreliable witnesses, as too am I. Sometimes I find it hard to sleep. So obviously Samantha Maxis is starting to reminisce on Eddie within the house. However, the last time that she saw him, he was a boy. And with the latest update, there is a new piece of intel that has been added to the game that I will let you listen to right now between Grigori Weaver and Samantha Maxis. Weaver. Hello, Sam. You look serious. My colleagues tell me you've not exactly been cooperative. Or forthcoming. Instead, you've been evasive. Obtuse, even. Ain't that just like me? This isn't a joke, Sam. I'm worried about you. We all are. After what I've been through, do you honestly think I'm joking? Sam... I thought I'd died and gone to hell. I thought everything and everyone I ever knew was gone forever. You've been to hell before though, Sam. We both have. I was never going to leave you there to die. Like you did the boy. That's not fair, Sam. That was a different situation. We both did all we could. But not enough. He's still dead, isn't he? I can see you're agitated, so I'm gonna let you get some rest. I hope you feel better soon. I don't want to upset you. Why? Are you worried I'll destroy everything like you think I did at Outpost 25? Weaver! So, once again, they are referencing a boy. However, apparently, this boy died. However, according to Weaver, they did all they could. And we do not know how this boy died, but it seems like Samantha Maxis is blaming Weaver, and she thinks that he could have done more to save him. And I am sure that this boy has to be referencing Eddie. I mean, in the prior intel from her diary, once again, she is referring to Eddie as a boy. So, I doubt this is referring to anyone else, like I've seen some people say speculating. If we just had this piece of intel on its own, it likely wouldn't be referencing Eddie. However, the fact that, with the release of Season 2, we got intel where Samantha directly referred to Eddie as a boy, and then within the mid-season update, there is now a new intel that once again refers to a boy, suggests that this has to be about Eddie. And if it is supposed to be referring to anyone else, then clearly the writers have written this in a way to mislead the community and make them think that it is Eddie by having two sets of intel that reference a boy in a row, even though they are completely different people from one another. But with the release of Outbreak, we also had an interview with Craig Houston, the lead writer over at Treyarch, in which he basically alluded to us seeing Eddie in the future, but that he wouldn't be like the old incarnations of Richtofen that we have seen before, he is going to be his own character. But yeah, the Treyarch writing team just don't want to retell the old Ether storyline, and they don't want to rewrite Richtofen's story that they told before. That is why when Eddie does eventually turn up, he may be quite different to those old versions of Richthofen because they don't want to ruin that old emotional story that they told in the old Ether story and ruin the sacrifice that they made on Tag to Toten where they all had to die. So even though this piece of intel seems to suggest that he has died, I am sure that we are going to see Eddie within a future map. Maybe they thought he was dead, but he is somehow still alive or maybe he is within the Dark Ether. I don't know, but I really, really doubt that they're just going to kill 
kill off Eddie like this. It doesn't make any sense at all. After all, we saw Richtofen die on Blood of the Dead in their last game. It doesn't make any sense for them to kill him two games in a row. Well, I guess technically three, since we also killed him on the Giants in Black Ops 3, if you really want to think about it. So there's a lot more new intel that's been added to the game that is really interesting, but the only ones that I want to talk about today is we have this other piece of intel talking about how Samantha Maxis has begun to get interrogated and experimented upon after she has exited from the Dark Aether on Firebase C and she has rejoined Requiem. They are obviously trying to research and find out what exactly has happened to her. Well, it's good to be part of a team, right? If I'm honest, I felt like a bit of a lab rat lately. I've been poked, prodded, questioned even. Interrogated. It's almost like they don't trust... me. I'm starting to understand how they feel. I'm not sure if I can trust them anymore. Even Weaver. Hi Sam, I'm Dr. Elizabeth Gray. I was wondering if you felt well enough for a bit of a chat? Sure Liz, why not? I don't really like being called Liz, that was my mum's name. I prefer Elizabeth, if that's okay. Oh, wait, I just realised, do you prefer Samantha? Samantha, Sam, Maxis, doesn't really matter to me. What do you want, Dr. Gray? I just wanted to ask you some questions. Truth is, we're all a little bit surprised how well you're doing after your time in, well, you know. You don't really know how well I'm doing or how long I was there, do you? That was one of the things I wanted to talk about. We do know that time moves differently there, slower or faster, not sure. Suppose it's all relative, really. I was there a long time. A very long time. So long I thought I'd never get out. I'm sorry. I really am. But that's what's so unusual. Normally when people come back, they're more damaged physically and emotionally. What makes you think I'm not damaged? The only thing we've actually been able to detect is the change in your eyes. I've never seen anything like it. They're almost iridescent. Do things look different to you? I see things differently, if that's what you mean. Sometimes the light hurts my eyes. Especially if I'm tired. Um, are you tired now? Would you mind switching the lights off on your way out? So from that we learn that Samantha Maxis is starting to not trust Requiem. In fact, she is even starting to become wary of Weaver. Now this could just be paranoia, or it may be because of the fact that it seems like Gregory Weaver is starting to suspect that Samantha is the one responsible for the zombie undead outbreak at Outpost 25 aka Firebase C. So obviously prior to Samantha Maxis being thrown into the dark ether by Dr. William Peck, Peck was harassing her and abusing her. Her. So when she was sent into the Dark Aether, she took all of that angst and suffering and basically unleashed it on Outpost 25. For some weird reason, when Samantha entered the Dark Aether, she managed to control the Aether itself and was able to control the zombies in a similar way to when she was in control of the zombies when she entered the MPD in the old Aether storyline. I think the reason for her being able to gain this ethereal power is because of the fact that she has prior connections to the Aether from the old Aether 
storyline. When other people have entered the Dark Aether, like Dr. Grey states, they have mutated a lot more. But the only noticeable change or visual change to Samantha Maxis is the fact that her eyes are obviously now purple as they have become crystalline with the Dark Aether's energy. She has gained ethereal powers, and I think the reason for her sending the zombies to Outpost 25 was because she was unleashing all of that anger on Peck. She probably didn't even realise she was doing it herself, it was something that was telepathical. Which is interesting because like I've talked about in a prior video, Omega Group's original purpose was to study psychotronics and was to create a team of psychics, and it seems like those infected with Ethereum actually gain ethereal powers and telepathical abilities. But Samantha does make it out like she has been damaged by the Dark Aether, maybe she hasn't really physically mutated apart from her eyes becoming purple, but her mind has been tormented, and she does say that her eyes are now more sensitive to the light, she asks Grey to turn off the light. Which makes sense because the Dark Aether, like its name suggests, is dark. And it seems like the undead and the Dark Aether's creatures' primary habitat is damp, wet and dark environments. I'm sure over the course of the future DLC, Samantha is going to become eroded and eroded even more as she becomes more corrupted by the Dark Aether. Considering that there is starting to become tension now with Samantha and Weaver, it does seem like Samantha will clash with Requiem very soon. And maybe she will accidentally cause something really bad to happen now that she has these ethereal powers. She may do something accidentally, just like we have intel on Firebase C from when she was within the Dark Aether that talks about how she murdered a bunch of Omega soldiers in the Dark Aether and she completely didn't realise it. It was just like a dream to her as she kept blacking out and having these weird visions. We also know that the leader of Requiem appears to be Russian and they appear to be up to no good as well. We don't really know what they are up to, but I definitely do see an upcoming clash between Samantha and Requiem and Samantha and Weaver, which is really interesting because this entire time we have not been expecting this because Weaver's always come across as a father figure towards Samantha. So now that there is angst between them and Samantha is now starting to not trust him, something bad is definitely about to happen. In terms of Eddie, I'm not really sure what's going on because I definitely don't think he has died. However, it explains as to why we haven't seen Eddie just yet. Because most likely when Samantha and Eddie entered this new universe as children, something happened and Eddie was thought to be dead. But I really don't think he is dead. As to what he is up to, I'm not really sure. Maybe he's mutated within the Dark Aether. Maybe he's this unknown character that was seen stalking Samantha in the D Machina intro that could potentially be the unknown operator that is meeting with Valentina from Omega that is helping her cause a Dark Aether anomaly breach in Berlin thanks to newly acquired targeted anomaly technology from the Euro Mountains. And that is going to be the next Zombies map. As Valentina appears to be unleashing lost Nazis from the Dark Aether and we will be playing in a destroyed on fire version of Berlin like we see from this calling card. And maybe Eddie could be involved in some way, shape or form with Valentina. Anyways, thank you for watching the video and make sure to subscribe if you're not here for the latest and greatest Call of Duty news and information. So anyways, thank you for watching and uh, bye.